Hi everyone, it's Aurora Galore and welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm doing something that I have promised people that I would do for the longest time and I'm actually doing it today. Apologies, but today we are learning how to make feather fans. So if you do like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more burlesque related, circus related, makeup related, whatevs things, mad things that I choose to share with everyone. Um, but yeah, and subscribe, subscribe, I said subscribe, share, whatever, do whatever. Um, it isn't gonna always look as good as if you buy it from um, a costume costumier. Like most things, um, this looks good and the fans that I've made have lasted me years and I really beat the shit out of them. So um, they have stood the test of time. Um, however, they're not as nice as some people who've had them custom made. So if you do feel like you want really special custom made burlesque feather fans, then I'd recommend going to somebody like Beau Rocks, Costumier, um, Catherine Delish, Flo Foxworthy. They make some breathtaking fans, but of course they do come with a heftier price tag than if you were to make them and buy all the stuff yourself. The whole process takes maybe five to six hours, I wanna say. Um, but without further ado, welcome. Okay, so if you wanna watch the actual feather fan making process, then skip to there, because I have no idea how long this video is gonna be, so that, there, skip to there if you want to see it start. But first, I'm gonna chat a little bit about the things that you can need, the, the, the things that you need and where you can find them and source specific products. This is the collection of items that you will need. So you will need feathers. These can be any color that you like. These can be any grade that you like. Obviously, the grade of feather and size of the feather will increase in price, the, the, the way that they will increase in size. So you will need scissors. I usually use a big pair and a smaller pair. Then you'll need cable ties or zip ties to hold them together or pieces of thin wire. These binds the feathers to the stave. You will then need wire cutters and or pliers. You will need a fishing line, fishing wire, whatever. Choose the one that kind of tackles really heavy fish so it's got a real pull to it because if you can imagine you are kind of moving the feathers around and there's a lot of weight so you want one that you literally, if you pull it, ow, it will hurt you rather than snap. Sandpaper. Um, you will also need a glue gun. A glue gun like so, and glue like so. You then need staves. Now these are acrylic, acrylic plastic staves that are clear, or you can get wooden staves, bamboo, that are usually colored, and they're quite firm. Optional, you will need some kind of gem glue, E6000 glue, rhinestones, any kind of rhinestones that you want. And then I tend to always have white scrap paper aside to put the glue gun on, to cut off any excess stuff. And I tend to just put it all so I can find it in one place. So they're the main things that you need. Class, pure class. <laughs> Up. Okay, so where can I find these things? Feathers you can normally find at a fabric shop or like a craft shop um, if you want, if you don't mind them looking quite cheap, quite cheap or smaller ones you can normally find them. Um, the much larger ones which look like about this each. Um, these I buy from a Chinese wholesaler. Um, you can get some sellers in the UK or the US, but I'm assuming there is a markup on price because they will buy from a Chinese wholesaler. 
So you can go to kind of Alibaba.com, AliExpress, any of those kind of big wholesaler um, websites and you have to basically just search through sellers. I would recommend asking them for, so type in like large ostrich plumes or pink ostrich plumes or whatever kind of um, specifications that you have. Yeah, big word. Um, and then kind of contact the seller and say, hi, I'm looking for 50 grade A ostrich plume, ostrich wing, ostrich whatever you want. I normally just put ostrich plume. Um, and then I ask for a color chart and a price chart um, and how much the shipping is to the UK or wherever you are. It's always best to kind of reference with a color chart and then send them that the color chart and say this is the color that I want because obviously it's so hard to ship things back to China and once I did that and Royal Mail lost my post and it had the whole thing I had to claim blah blah blah. The majority of staves are normally 12 to 16 staves long. I know that when, when you buy kind of stave kits, acrylic, they come in 12. And kind of generally the fan making process works exactly the same um, with feathers or anything else. If you want to get something like palm tree leaves or fabric or ethically sourced feathers or something like that, organic substances, I would recommend eBay and Etsy and those types of things because a lot of kind of vegan organic um, alternatives are usually found on places like Etsy because they're independent sellers so they might be a bit pricier but they're probably going to be um, a bit more custom to what you're looking for. Just kind of find the place that you're looking for and I recommend if you have something custom um, on your staves and I recommend probably doing it yourself because a costumier might charge you a lot of money just for the hassle of finding everything because they can't go directly to their seller. So zip ties you can find at any kind of hardware shop or hardware store. These are where I found these. You can get some at like Poundland but I tend to find that they're not as strong. So I can get like a large pack like this for about six pounds and there's 200 in there and then pieces of wire like this if you buy a fan stay kit it normally comes with these pieces of wire or you can um, buy like a really big kind of reel of wire and you can just clip it off as you see fit and cut it to kind of about oh shit yeah in my hair Mm -hmm. Cut it to about that size. I totally forgot this in my intro. You need nuts and bolts and washers. Again, if you buy a kit, it will come with this, but if not, I mean, you can literally get like a nut and bolt for like 10p at a hardware <laughs> shop. And these washers are like the same. So you get two of these, I mean, literally for under like 50p. The size you want is kind of... <sighs> It's really dependent on the fan. The more washers that you put in between each stave, the thicker it will become. So if you want them to be quite thick, so they close a lot easier, um, then you might want a longer stave or whatever. It's entirely preference. Um, fishing wire, as I said, this is Omnix 30 pounder. It's for a 30 pound fish. It's pretty, it's pretty ah, fish. I bought this like five years ago um, for like seven quid or something and I'm like not even nearly part of the way through it. Glue gun um, and little glue sticks. You can either get these from like a hardware shop, hardware store, same as this. You can buy this. If anyone has a toolbox, you'll tend to have this. Once again, this, yep. Yeah. Amazon. Um, but these tend to be like any kind of craft stores, even something like WH Smith's, like a stationery or stationers, they'll have um, glue stick with glue. Our staves. Now, staves are f funny. They're really hard to they're really hard to find. You can get these stave kits that come with these standard kind of ostrich.com. Yeah. Um, 
writing on them and these are pretty firm I've only had a I mean I've had them snap in the past but it's because I'm really aggressive with my fan dancing um so it's not really the manufacturer's fault per se I don't think they were intended for aggressive you know 300 show a year use but I've only had like maybe five snap in my entire career so in the grand scheme of things it's actually not that bad so you can either get kind of acrylic staves a lot of people try to find any kind of plastic manufacturer and manufacture their own staves um, so if you have a relative or a friend that works there you can try and get them custom made and they'll probably be a lot thicker and a lot sturdier then you can either have them clear or custom made iridescent or like a colour to suit your fan colour um, I tend to find that the plastic staves are significantly more sturdier and can withstand a lot more force than the wood or bamboo but because they're not an organic substance they do look a lot uglier you can get this type of stave which is also plastic acrylic which I bought on Etsy I think um, but this one doesn't feel as sturdy I bought this just to kind of as an example and they come pre-bolted. You can unscrew the bolt and put your own bolt on if you want. These plastic ones can be found on like frufru.co.uk, Fancy Feather, um, for like the standard ostrich.com kind of plastic staves. Or if you want like really nice custom ones, you could get some from Flo Foxworthy, I think but it's kind of dependent on your preference and mostly your budget. Bamboo staves. Mm. See there are, I got these from I believe Cholula Blue on Etsy. Um, you can also find them on other Etsy shops or like the bamboo stave shop or something online. But if you type in kind of bamboo fan staves or fan staves or burlesque fan staves, on the first few pages there tends to be quite a lot of choices and for the most part, they're all pretty decent, but you kind of just have to go with your gut or what you think looks good or what you think looks sturdy. It also might be that you want a light shade of bamboo and these are the only ones you can find because they do come in light and dark. For wooden staves, they're a lot harder to come by, like for the kind of thicker wooder, for the thicker wood staves. Um, lastly, we have our kind of rhinestones and or glue. I tend to use E6000. You can use gem tack or anything else. I wouldn't recommend hot gluing rhinestones onto your feather fans because they tend to pop off quite easily. Um, you can use any size you want. These are like an SS16 size or an SS20, which are kind of the general standard size that I tend to go. The first thing that you're going to do is divide, divide up the feathers into the ones that bear to the right and the ones that bear to the left. So I normally kind of put them into two different piles and then that's how I start doing my feathers. So it's kind of bears that way. These are comparisons and that's where the scissors come in. Line them up as best I can or just to kind of snip off the bottom part. See, these ones are a bit more twi trickier because as you can see it kind of twists a lot so it almost becomes like a spiral. Now these get quite tough when you're trying to put them on the stave because it kind of disrupts the semi-circle of the feather fan. Um, so I tend to try and kind of wriggle them to get them kind of semi-straight. Um, kind of semi-straight but if not then I'll kind of glue it to another feather in such a way that it kind of holds. So as you can see, I've divided them up into two piles. So what I have to do next is count how much are in each pile. And then there should be 25 in each in a perfect world. Um, but if there are some, if there's one pile that has like 30 and one that has 20, then what you have to do is you have to find five on the larger quantity side that bear more towards the middle and just a little bit off to one to the to the opposite side so you can kind of get away with putting them on the opposite side and from here we have what we have to do is pick one side to start with I'm gonna pick this side just because and then I'm gonna set these feathers to one side to work on them later so I what I do is do one fan at a time so to get the fullest and 
most precise feather, I find that it's best if you glue them on top of each other. Now some people might be opposed to using hot glue um, on their feathers because they're so expensive and such high quality, but if you just take care to glue them on the stem, if there are any issues then you can pull it off quite easily as opposed to if you glue on the actual feather part. Now this is the same for any number of feathers that you use. Um, so if you just have a single layer, then you would obviously just put this one down. If you have a double layer, then you'd use this one at the base, and then the next one goes on top of it, but the stave, but this stem is here, is higher than this. So we wouldn't keep them the same, because it keeps it the same length, it just makes it a little bit more fluffier. And also trying to zip tie or wire this thick part onto a stave is a lot higher than if you kind of move it downwards and have one here and then one on the two and then one here. And then of course if you're going up then you'd put the next one here and so forth for however many layers. This is one layer and this is Four layers. The more feather that you put on it, the more weight it has. So if you are using a three, a three plus layer feather fan, then they do get very heavy because it's a lot of weight on your wrists, it's a lot of weight as you kind of claw on, and also because the feathers are kind of lightly adhered, even if you use glue or zip ties, they do naturally want to bend because this is a bendable and malleable substance, so they will move. So now that we've got all of these ready, we're about to kind of find two together that match the best, but in order to do that, we need to snip all of these ends, and you don't want to take it right to the base of the feather, you want to kind of give it a little bit of breathing room. These are quite thick, so I use two hands. Come on, DIY floor. Yes. This is also my new backdrop and everything. I basically just try and position my little head in here to be like, yes, fuchsia branding. This is a good tension reliever, so if you don't like someone, you could be like, eh. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm like the thing from oh, Adam's family. I glue them straight away so you have your 12 main larger feathers. We turn on the glue gun, of course I put a protection underneath, so kind of a quarter of the way in you can just kind of glue this whole area and then plonk that on top. You can do it in sections, so you can do kind of like the middle third and then glue that down and then either pull this up or pull this to the side underneath and then glue that part and then take that over and glue it down. You really want to avoid the feather side as much as possible. You really just want to aim for the stem. And um, what you want to avoid is getting any glue on this part because what happens is it clumps together and then you get lots of voids in it. Or if you're clumping this and you're kind of gluing it like that, it will just thin out the feather. You don't want to go straight in, you kind of want to bounce it lightly so that the only thing that's showing is the feather, you don't, is the stem, you don't want any of the feathers to kind of be overlapping the stem because it gets a lot harder. I'm going to do a line across here. So I just did this much and then I'm going to put this on top and I'm going to hold it together. Go underneath, pull this here, glue this down, and then bring that down. This is the hardest part as always. I normally do it by feel, which is how I always burn myself. So now we have our 12 gigantic feathers. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do is get these on the stave. So similarly to the way that we did the feathers, you would put glue on perhaps a third of the way in, 
glue that whole part and then glue that down. That should be quite solid just with glue. If you want to add a zip tie or a piece of wire to keep it um, extra strong, that's completely up to you. But for today, I'm just using the acrylic stays. So they can't, the ones that I get come in these little packages, like so, so take off the little packaging. It doesn't really matter what side you put the feather on. The most important thing is that the feathers are all on the same side. The next step is you get your stave and then you one, two, three, four set of holes. So I'm gonna kind of start it. I'm gonna start the end of the stem so it goes in between the first. So this is where the zip tie or the little piece of wire come in to play. So if you're doing a zip tie fastening, as I said, what we like last time, you wanna try and make sure the stem is completely in the middle of the stave. And what I do is I will feed it through the inside, like so, and then take it upwards like so. So the underside is hooked over. I lightly thread all of them and then once I've got them in place then I will tighten them all. Tighten them all. This is where I tighten it more because I've lined up all of where the feather needs to be. I'll cut the fe I'll cut the zip tie as close to the edge as possible. Just be careful not to get any feathers. So if you want to do the wires instead, if you bend the wire so the wire will start long and then you kind of bend it, just curve it round like so. And it's a similar process to the zip tie. See, it goes on top of it. Instead of going under and round, I take this U and put it like so. And once again, on the next one, this is harder to find because you have to have it on the upside, on the back side. So you kind of have to have a little search for where the hole is and put it either side. See, I found that a lot harder. So then the, un so then the underside looks like this. And then from here, you twist the wire round so it looks like this pliers slash wire cutters and you take it quite close to the edge and really and then what we do is use these wire cutters to snip the excess like so And then as you see, there's a bit sticking out. What you do is you can kind of go like that. And what you want to do is try and get the head of it in the hole. So this is, hopefully you can see, this is the difference between the two. And obviously this looks a lot less ugly on this side, but I find because you have to tighten it quite a lot that the wire actually digs into the stem, so I feel like it damages the fan a little bit. So you just repeat that process constantly, either in the zip tie or the wire, whichever you choose. Okay, so now here we have the finished 12 stays. And you could leave them like this, but if you run your hand across, you'll notice that they are incredibly sharp. So this is where the sandpaper comes in. Get it like so, and just sand down the edges. Sand 
So now that the edges are all sanded down and they're nice and smooth, now you need to arrange them in order of how they will fan out. One is significantly taller like this one or it bends a different way you tend to put those on the outside because they can go in and flow into the other feathers where if they're just in the middle they might kind of stick out and go any old direction put one down and then the next one on top of it and then the next one on top of it and if the next one doesn't work you kind of put it in the right spot and then that's when we get our bolt and washers and start bolting them together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to thread it and remember that they all have to be facing the same way so try not to get one back side up or one this side up and then the next one the opposite direction. So how I kind of keep on top of this is have the bolt going upwards. So this is upwards, this is the back of it because this is the front here and then I'll put the washers on the next two washers and then I'll get the next one in line and put that down. That's the last one so I'm going to kind of push it through as much as I can through the bolts on. Now this usually takes a little bit of extra muscle. The next part is for me the trickiest and that's wiring it all together. It's best to wire it at least twice. You can do it on all three if you want to. So if you do it too wide then you're going to have a gap as you can see here. If you do it too close and the fan's going to be too small and you're not utilizing the entirety of the feathers. If you want to wire them very close you can if that's your preference. If you want to wire them very sparse if that's your preference that's fine but if you kind of want to do it in a standardized way. If you were to move it you can see in between the feathers um, but not too much. We're only kind of using this much. So you're going to take a piece of string and because this is the first one so you're going to find that hole. Sometimes you have to push the zip tie or bit of wire to get it in. Just kind of thread it through and this is where you get a lot of the snagging of feathers. Um, so it does get quite tough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knot it because this is the opening and then I'm going to go under again. Okay and then from there, so I did it on the outside one, so then I'm going to take the outside one and the next one. I'm not going to thread one, two, one, two. I'm just going to do one, then one, then one, the first hole on each because it enables the open and close a lot better. I'm just going to the next one, so I'm going to thread that there. And then that creates you can see here, oh there it is. So you can see that line so as I pull that comes towards me. Now get a loose knot to where I want it to be. So you've really got to look at how far you want these to be apart. This is what I meant for if it's strung really loosely, then they'll be here. If it's strung really tightly, it'll be here. So you've kind of got to ease it into place and kind of get it in. And then we can start to tighten it. Not that, and then what I'll probably do is go round that again. So here we are finally on the last one. Oh my god, my finger is you can see on my finger, but it's basically like bleeding a little bit from the pulling of the wire. This is like the least fun part about this is that you it's literally pop some skin and cut the edges off. So there we have it. As you can see here, this is with two. 
The last step that you can do, and it's entirely up to you if you want to do this step, is to add rhinestones to make them sparkle a little bit more. It's not so great to put them down here because it makes it harder for them to close. And this is the part where you're holding it, um, then it makes it a little bit bumpy and harder to get your grip. So what I recommend is not to put them on the feather, much like when we glued them earlier. So it adds weight to the feathers and where they're quite light and airy and they move nicely, if there's a weight on it, they might not bounce the same way. So you get a little bit of glue, however you want to apply it, and you will put it onto the stem. Like so, and then you'll get your crystal whatever color you choose to use and you'll put it on top of the glue so as you could see there it creates a sparkle so I do recommend if you're doing the entire stem of rhinestone to use just a slightly different color so there we have our finished fan as you can see very pretty and here's it upwards so thank you so much if you made it this far along in the video and you've watched the whole thing I hope this helps in fan making in general it's taken just a few hours just to do the one um, but if you're a beginner or if you're somebody who's on a budget I think it's a really good idea to make your fans yourself um, or if you're just looking to slowly build up um, maybe buy a super cheap pair and then just kind of add on to it um, but if you have any questions or comments um, about anything that I've done or about anything that I didn't mention then please just put them in the comments below and I'll answer um, and if there's any other kind of burlesque related or dance related or fire or circus related anything that you'd like me to do then please let me know as well otherwise la 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 mm. ah. nailed it yeah.